Welcome. So in the last couple of videos, we talked about variables, constant variables, what happens when we create a variable. Today, we're going to start looking at how we actually manipulate data, and particularly numeric data, by using arithmetic operators. So let's get started. So let's create a new variable here. I'm going to say, uh, I want to know how many coins I have. So I would say int number of coins, right? And typically, typically, what we would want to do is we would write, let's say, 30, right? If we know the number of coins. But let's say that you don't know the number of coins. Let's say you have a bag and you count it, the, maybe the number of dimes, pennies, and so forth, and you would like the computer to do that math for you. So instead of putting a 30 here, what we could do is we could actually write the mathematical expression. And so we could say, well, I have seven pennies, and I have five nickels and three dimes and two quarters, right? So now um, my result, this result of number of coins, will be first computed by this mathematical expression. And whenever the result is computed, then this will be assigned to number of coins. And so now uh, I can come down here and say, okay, well, let's just say how many coins I have. So let's say I have, let's, let's, let's write, I have this many coins. And if we run this and I come here, it'll say I have 17 coins, right? So that's the sum of that. And we could do the same thing if we have floating numbers. So I can say float, and let's say we're talking about money, my money, and let's say I have $300.75 because I've been saving. And then, you know, my mother said, you know what, I found a dollar and fifty. Here you go, you can have it because she's generous. And then I said, you know what, I found a quarter on the ground and now I have this much money. And so you want to know what the result of this is. So then we come here and you know what, I'm just going to write result here. So we're not, we do not need to change messages. And because this is a float, we did, we did say that we have not explained what this line of code does, right? So for now, you're just kind of using it as I use it in order so that we can display information in the terminal. So we're a float, we have to put an F here, and then we put my money here. And when I run this, you will realize that we have result $302.50. Now, as I said, this is a mathematical expression. And we can make this mathematical expression as complicated as it can be. So for example, let's say I also want to subtract. Let's say that I drop the coin, right? I can subtract the coin. Let's say that in, in terms of money, I went and I bought a chocolate bar and it cost me, let's say, $1.25, right? So now if I do a subtraction here and I put it in, you know, here to display it, well, we should get, what, 301 with 25 cents. So there it is. So we can do this mathematical expression as tedious as we have to with addition, subtraction, and as you guess it, we can also add multiplications. So let's look at some multiplication. Let's say I have some apples, so I'm going to say apple count, count, and I have three bags with five apples each. Right? That should be 15. Let's say I want to do division. Well, I want to know how many apples in a bag, right? So let's say I have 15 apples as the answer of above, and I want to divide it by three bags. Then I can also get the result of that. So I can come here and put a D and let's just say, let's do the second one, apples in a bag, since we're doing division. And that's it, right? You can see my result is five. And you know what, let's just show both just for, for you know, for completion. So here we have result is 15. Now notice that I'm using all these numbers here, 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 here. We do not have to use the numbers. I mean, we already know how many apples we have, right? So in theory, this, this apple count could be the number of apples that I have that I'm trying to see how many are in a bag. So I could also replace this 15 by just saying apple count. And automatically it knows, okay, apple count is the re result of three times five, which is 15. So here, will be 15 divided by three. And if I put this variable back in here and we run this, you will see that we get the same result. Result equals five. Generally speaking, what we would want to do is we, do, we would like to put all of these values in a particular variable. It's, it's good to have these values in variables rather than just to have this random number here because again maybe you already forgot what 1.5 is so instead i could break this down 
and say something like float, I could say my savings, and that is 300.75, and, and then I could say float my mom's generosity, that's 1.5, and then let's say float uh, quarter, uh, no, let's say uh, money I found, and then 25 cents, and then float uh, chocolate bar expenses. You know, you can probably think of better names than that. And then right here, my money, I can now say what? Instead of saying this number, I can say my savings. Instead of saying this number, I can say my mom's generosity. And instead of saying this number, I can say money I found. And of course, chocolate bar expenses, right? And if I come down here and I put my money, oh, not my mom's generosity, I can put my money. I can now run this and I should have the same result 301 with 25 cents. Again, this is the right way or, you know, the desired way to do it because once you see this, if you just come back to see your code, you know, like, oh, I'm talking about, I'm adding my savings, my mom's generosity, the money I found, and how much I spend on a chocolate bar. Whereas in the previous one, per perhaps you see this and you're like, wait, was, was the seven representing pennies or nickels or dimes? I don't remember. Maybe I did it in a particular order. Maybe I didn't. So this, of course, is much more useful to do than to something like this. So get the habit of putting these values that, that you would put like this in the mathematical expression in variables first, and then you use them in the mathematical expression. All right? I'm not going to do that for the rest of this video just to speed it up so, so that we don't spend too much time uh, on this t little technical stuff, but you should do it. Do as I say, not as I do, uh, well, do as I did on this part, but not as I will do on the next part. So now we have to talk about uh, the order of operations, right? Because in here we did addition, subtraction, then we have multiplication and division. But what if we have something complicated? So let me write something here. Let's say I have some computation, that's a floating variable, and I have a 5.0 plus, and I can also use parentheses, right? If I want to go against the order of operations, if I want to do some kind of addition, like here, for example, 7.3.1 plus, and I'm going to divide that by 3.2, and I'm going to subtract 8.0 divided by 2.0 times 3.0, right? So notice that I have some additions, some subtractions, some divisions, multiplications, and then I have another addition, which is inside of a parenthesis. So as you may have, if you could recall from school, is that there's an order to do these operations. And that goes parentheses, exponents, then multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. Fortunately, you know, I guess somewhat fortunately, we do not have exponents. There's no an, an exponent operator. So we do not have to worry about it, at least not in C++. There are ways to do exponents, but we'll talk about that in the future. So first, we have to worry about parentheses. That's the first thing we do. So inside of these parentheses, there could be an entire mathematical expression, which also has to follow the order of operations. Now, I did something simple, which is 7.3 plus 8.1, all right, not too difficult. And then once we find the results of that, we look for other parentheses. Notice there are no more parentheses, so what do we do? So now 7.3 plus 8.1, whatever the result of that is, will be divided by 3.2 because the next thing to do is multiplication and division. And we do them in the order that they appear in the expression. So this division comes first. So once you have these results, then you do the next multiplication or division that comes, which would be this one. This will be what? 4.0 times 3.0 because that's the next thing. Well, actually, what you would have is you would have 5.0 plus the results of this minus 4.0 times 3.0. So, of course, we have a plus, a minus, and a multiplication left. So, we do this one next, and then we do this addition, and then we do the whole subtraction. So, if I come here and I say I want to know what the result of this expression is, I can come and I can see that it's negative 2.1875. And yeah, you can use negative numbers. You can now use C++ as your own personal calculator. You can come here and you say, I want to know the area of a circle. I want to know some how much I have to pay for something or whatever. You can come and write that mathematical expression here 
and that result, then you can display it and you will know your answer. In fact, what I suggest for you to do next is to try out some of these things. You know, if there's something that you want to figure out with math, try and do it with C++ just to get those results. In fact, if you have time, I would like you to do some exercises. Why don't you have something like finding the area of a square, right? So if I have something like, let's say I say float square side is 6.0, you know, then the area would be what? Square area would be 6.0 times 6.0, right? So why don't you try doing this for other shapes like triangles, circles, and so, well, maybe not circle because you would have to put pi. Well, you can put pi, right? Three pi is 3.1416. You can try that. Uh, so yeah, so try some of these. I, I suggest you try some of these so that you can get the habit of writing code and making a few mistakes. Perhaps forget that semicolon. All right. So. Here we have the arithmetic operators, very basic stuff. Hope you found this video useful. If you did and don't mind, leave a like. If you have a question, leave a comment. If you're new to this channel, check out the video series. Check out the channel. If you like what you see, subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Be safe and peace out.